Welcome to Knights of Roleplay, an adventuring podcast. This is an actual play Dungeons and Dragons podcast. Royalty free music provided by Kevin McLeod, Michael Gelfi Studios, Plate Mill Games, and Tabletop Audio. And now, to adventure. Hello, listeners. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Nights of Roleplay. This is DM Chris, and uh, we have no uh, babysitter tonight, and we are also on Zoom, so Kate and I may uh, have our attention divided <laughs> or, or be AFK sometimes. We have uh, three cast members who are all uh, <laughs> at the tail end of being sick, uh, and one of those is our uh, illustrious DM, John. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to allow John to try to kill us while he is kind of sick. Go ahead, John. Yeah, Chris, for some reason, just didn't want me to share the love. I mean, really, Chris? I don't know what's wrong with him. We've all shared the love. I know. That's the unfortunate part that we've all shared, shared the love. The love. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. What does it say left? that me and two of the boys shared the love? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <Uh-oh>. Whoa. <laughs> so where we last left off. At our, at our last adventure, um, you managed to dodge the remnants of the vicious spiders uh, by uh, a with a daring charge and grab by Durkris to get their your next god. And after that, you last you uh, rent down the last remaining corridor, where you were blocked by a large fan, or would have been, uh, but for the uh, reflexes of the party's monks, uh, managed to bypass that with relative ease. There, Durkris got magic zapped, Tavriel got metal bent, and Mayok turned ice cold in order to open the last sarcophagus, wherein you had to fight it, spank the, the vicious little monkey. <laughs> and, and, got, and for your trouble, you got yourself a third god and a rather sinister mace um, be- <laughs> um, take, um, taking a uh, quick hour to identify your magic items uh, you found uh, during that hour a uh, another one of those large metal uh, constructs um, came stomping into the uh, uh, onto the pressure plate that starts the fan up and there you now sit inside the uh, the god's tomb while that large armor bound creature is on the other side of a very fast spinning fan metal fan how would you like to proceed so john to review when i tried to use the mace of terror on it it appeared that the creature had failed the save but was not affected right am i interpreting how you described that correctly well, you wouldn't know whether or not he passed or failed a save, um, but uh, he did not appear to be affected. Okay. All right. Uh, so, and I'm up there on the ledge by the fan, holding my own for now. Yep. Um, it's a bit. Of, it's a bit windy. Uh, but uh, I think you made your check last time, so yeah. yeah, you're hanging on. Can you remind me, did did we thoroughly search the room the last time as far as trying to see if there were mechanisms to disable the trap? Uh, you did do a pretty thorough investigation of the room. Okay. You don't you don't see any kind of mechanism to stop the fan from this side. Okay. Uh, what what's around for like? Uh debris. I mean, do we have pieces of the sarcophagus that we can try to, like, jam into the fan or something? Uh, the sarcophagus pieces are really brittle. You think the fan would chew them up, no problem. I mean, you opened it up with a kick. Uh, okay. I the, say... Uh, go ahead, John. Um, uh, the uh, uh, chest, the three chests are firmly uh, attached to the floor, and you can't seem to move them. Um, other than that, you've got yourself a dead, undead monkey thing. And uh, let's see, where's that? Throw it in the fan. 
Well, the undead monkey corpse doesn't have any problem getting chewed up by the fan. <laughs> and Kate, you get pelted by undead monkey corpse dust. Ew. Yeah. I, I was kidding, but I like what you did, so we're gonna go with it. <laughs> <laughs> we still have a spiritual boar. Um, I think it already poofed. It's yes. probably poofed by now. You you you, you hung about for an hour. Because it didn't have any weight, so <laughs> we couldn't we couldn't use it for the pressure plate. Let's say I could potentially stun it from a distance. Something about how this this god is affecting me, but I don't think that's going to help. It'll just stay on the plate. We'll still be stuck. What about uh, like like attacking the fan? I mean, there must be some point in the middle where the where the fan is spinning around, and we can maybe like just maybe destroy the mechanism, and just <laughs> just beat up the fan. Hmm. Uh, let me get a better see if I can get a. Yeah, I mean, solid is it description of the fan itself. Mounted at a single point. You, you told us we had the tools we needed, so I'm intrigued by this. What do you think we should do, Liliana? What do you think we should do? Mommy. Mommy? All right, I'll, I'll, I'll ask mommy what we should do. Do any of the gods in our heads have any suggestions? I mean, they've been here for a long time, and though they've been like hanging out in sarcophaguses and stuff, but out of character, I was going to wait a minute and then ask my god, given that it's, it's his sarcophagus, and hopefully he'd have some answers. But I want to wait till John describes the fan. Well, wouldn't a mace like be a brutal thing to it? Maybe if we smashed it. So well, that so, is the only weapon she has right now, so I'm thinking she doesn't want to try to sacrifice it if she can help it. Wait, wait, I, I got, I got an idea. Hold on a sec. How far, how far are we away? How far is he away from us? Uh, he is. What'd you say? Like sixty feet, thirty something? Not even that much. Polymorph. Uh, I, I, I only have level one spells left. Let's see. I thought polymorph uh, was low level. I, maybe no, I'm wrong. He no. has no polymorph left. He said that like eight <laughs> times. <laughs> well, that, no, that, that's I have, shape I have no wild change. Shape left. Yeah, have yeah. No wild shape yeah. Left. Um, it is uh, from the edge of the uh, fifteen. The uh, the pit is fifteen feet long. I don't know which side of the pit you're standing on. If you're standing on the far side, um, and then it's ten feet. Then there's ten feet of corridor to the fan, and then there's. And then there's about 20 feet to him. The fan itself takes about a five foot space. So you're talking at about 35, uh, uh, 35, 35 feet of corridor plus of uh, 15 feet of pit. So 50 feet if you're on the far side of the pit. All right. I stare deep into his whatever if he if he has eyes. I think he's not facing us. Yeah, he is. And I say, retreat. And I cast command. Cast command. Oh. Okay. So wisdom save, uh, DC okay. 16. Let me check that. Let me check his stats here. Good idea, Fang. Yeah, thanks. We'll see if it works. Uh, That's a charm, right? Uh, I don't know. Hmm. I'm curious. Hmm. So, yeah. Follow its command on the next. Follow the command on its next. Yeah, turn. command spell. Does it actually say charm, though? It does not. It's uh, first level enchantment. Okay, if it doesn't say charm, then it's uh, that I'm gonna. If it doesn't say charm, then I'm gonna call it that he's not charmed. That it's not. A, that it's not a charm per se. It is an enchantment, but that's not quite the same thing. Ah, oh. shit. Uh, so let's see. No, I, I think. Oh, no crap. John was saying that it, it's not a charm, which is good for us because it's probably. It's good for us because yeah, it's probably immune to being. <laughs> Not immune to being stunned, as we've learned historically, but immune to being frightened, possibly. Uh, Charmed. Yada yada. Because it's it's a big dumb golem. 
It's a construct. It looks like John's about to make a saving throw, though, so that's good. It's, it's a meat wad. Ah. Uh, all right, You're so it's a wisdom wad. saving throw. Oh, meat yeah. wad. Wisdom what? save 16. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he gets a 15. Oh, <laughs> nice. Uh, okay. Uh, all right, bruh. Good job. How long, does, that How long does the spell last? Let's just hope retreat is the, is the proper oh, let's see. response. Um, what 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 is the uh, duration of the spell? Uh, one round. One so round. I would guess that I guess it would technically start combat. Okay. Almost. Well, I mean, it, it's six seconds too. You can look at it that way. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just look at it as six seconds. Um. Okay. He does. Um. With, uh, without making a noise, he turns around and he begins to walk away a little bit. Um, as he steps off the pressure plate, the fan starts to spin down, but it's still spinning. Uh, I'm going to wait for it to slow until I think it's not a huge danger, and then I'm going to try to put my grappling hook on it. Um, if the... Uh, you're pretty sure that he's going to be coming back pretty quick. Okay, I, I just wait until the last second, and then if the fans, if he's about to step back on the pressure plate and the fans still going too fast, then I will abort the plan. Okay, so well, let me see. I mean, how far did he retreat though? Because if he retreated his full movement, yeah, he'll be back at the end of his next round, at the end of his next movement. Okay. Um. Go ahead. Um, all right. If you're gonna throw in the grappling hook, then go ahead and make a strength strength athletics check with at uh, disadvantage, unless somebody wants to help you. Obviously, uh, I can uh, help because I, I was up there anyway. Oh, this way. Okay. I'm not near. I'm then far. Go make, then go ahead and make a normal one. Just a, it's uh, probably still going kind of fast, but just not quite full speed. Okay. Strength athletics. Okay. Uh, Uh, 17. 17. Uh, the... Okay. Uh, who is helping him? Me. Terio. Both of you make, uh, uh, dexterity acrobatics checks. Oh, boy. Okay. Ooh, who wants to play? I got, I got 18. I got 24. Okay. As you throw in, throw the grappling hook into the fan, the grappling hook does indeed catch on the fan. However, uh, the two of you are not quite strong enough to hold on to the rope. Um, Kate, uh, you, however, managed to let go in time <laughs> before anything happens. Uh, Gleep, however, um, didn't quite manage to let go of the rope. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yep. And as the, uh, and as the uh, rope starts to wrap around the mechanism, uh, Gleep gets yanked towards the uh, uh, the spinning fan. Uh, where <laughs> <were you? laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you're kind of small. You're kind of light. You go flying pretty quick. And I kind of stretch towards it. Right. He's, at least he's liquid, right? Yeah. <laughs> that should help, right? It... <laughs> Does he splatter on us? Ew. Well, it's not going quite full speed, so you're not taking full damage. And as you go flying up and you collide into the fan blades, you take 41 points of slashing damage. Oh. I got, I got, I got. Ow. Uh, Leap is uh, unconscious wherever you say he's unconscious. <laughs> oh, no. Um, the fan kind of spits you out uh, back on the, onto uh, the uh, tomb side. Um, because that's the direction the wind is blowing, um, and you just kind of lie there in a puddle. Okay. <laughs> um, so let's see. The fan is—he <laughs> did slow down the fan significantly, though. 
but I'd say everybody has one more action they can take before the Guardian returns. Let's see, someone jump over and help me hold this. <laughs> one of the strong people. Uh, I have I I have the movement to actually jump it in one jump, so I can jump over mm-hmm. there and attempt that. Okay. okay. So I will help you. <laughs> okay. So you're just gonna try to grab onto the fan blades. Basically, uh, do I have time to take uh, an action before we have to grab on before the monster comes back? Uh, you have time to take one action. Okay. Uh, that action will be good. Gleep, did any uh, healing potions appeal, appear in your pile of goop? Uh, hold on a sec. Uh, no, the one that Gleep had has been used. Okay. Uh, she... Um touches you and uses a key point to heal you. Okay. If you oh, do yes. that, you won't be able to do anything with the fan blade before he comes back. You said that I had time to take one action before I would no, have No, I said you have time to take leg. one action. Okay, I was not clear on yeah, that. That's so. why I'm let- I figured that was the case. That's why I'm letting you know. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I will help her grab onto the fan blade. That's the more important thing at okay. this exact moment. Uh, out back. Someone give him a healing potion quick. Let's see. Do I have time to cast another spell, or? So I'm attempting to grab here? onto this fan blade with, with my bare yes. hands. With help. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, both of you uh can make uh either a dexterity or a strength check. Uh, dexterity, acrobatics, or strength, athletics. If to I'm either helping her, or you can do pick one and help the, and help. I mean, I I will do the advantages of athletics with the help, yeah. if that's okay. That's fine. Rolling in D and D Beyond. That is a twenty-five, Alex. Nice. <laughs> okay, that is sufficient. Uh, the two of you together manage to. Uh, grab hold of the slowing fan blade and bring it to a stop. Okay. Mayak, Fang, you've still also got an action to take before he comes back. Um, how far am I away from where Gleep is? Uh, you're about 25 feet away across a hit. Yeah, uh, to, to review Which you wouldn't Greg, have any you... problem jumping. Yeah, you have the strength last adventure to jump it. So you could jump over and do something. If your strength score is more than 15, you can jump it in one. Yeah, I'm going to jump it and and see if I can... Well, what do I have to even do? (laughs) I don't think I have any I mean, I thought you bought healing potions. I did. But can you you take it, though? You give it to him. Yeah, you can dump it on him. Yeah, you just dump it into the sludge. (laughs) I mean, don't you have level one cure wounds, Greg? Mm, Yes, I do. So how much does that heal for? That might be better. Um, 3d8 plus 3. Yeah, that's better than the healing potion. Okay, yeah. so I can cast... I'll use one slot. Wait, wait for a cure wound? Really? 3D8 Are you casting it at third level? Uh, I don't Which have is... any third levels. That seems high. That is uh, level it, 1. It's just 1d8, yeah. Greg. Oh, oh sorry. It was, I clicked on something else. 1d8, sorry. That's sorry. okay. Still better than a D4. Oh, wait. Uh, I do have a third slot, so I'm going to use the third slot. There you go. So, there you go. Level three cure wounds for bleep. Okay. Three D8. I touch you and make you better. How much do you heal me? Uh, let's see... I'll roll it on D. Can I roll it on D Beyond? Yeah, you should be able to just use the spell action. Where is that? So, um, click into the spells, and there should be like where you normally hit damage or whatever okay. in the little box. You should be able to like actually click on it and hit roll. Okay, so I have s- auto roll it. Spells. So I'm in spells. Okay. 
uh, pick your level. Okay, which I did. So, so I'll roll. click on the the spell oh, that you there want we to go. cast. Yep, and then it should auto roll it. Okay. So, so it looks four. like it was for fourteen. Yes. Fourteen. It uh, cast okay. it out to us. Okay, 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 okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Bang. You got one action before Eager comes back. Um, I guess I'll take this opportunity to heal myself a little bit. Uh, it'll just be a level one um, healing word. Do you still have a rope in place to climb back over to the platform? Because I think that's how we got you over to the other side. I have no idea. We have no ideas. <laughs> heal myself for five. <laughs> okay. And as you finish up uh, your uh, your healing spell uh, from around from down the tunnel, you once again start hearing the thump, thump, thump as the uh, big metal man once again, uh, steps around, walks around the corner, and steps back onto the pressure plate. Uh, Durkus and Tavriel, you're still hanging onto the fan. Make oh, another strength no. check. All right, so I'm helping you. So with adventure advantage again, go ahead, Durkus. With adventure. Go. With adventure. Strong. With adventure. Strong like tiny can... cobalt of rage. Strong like tiny uh, cobalt of rage. Twenty six. <laughs> That will do it. The fan nice. tries to start up, but you manage to hold it de- hold it down. You better run and you better take that thing down. Okay. <laughs> okay, I think at this point we can go into initiative. Oh, yeah, we basically got to have you guys take care of this thing while she and I are holding the fan, and then we'll get yeah. everybody out the way we came in. But, <laughs> yeah. Leap's got this. <laughs> All right, so how do I roll initiative on here? I think you can just click on um, initiative. Right click on your initiative, and well, for me, I have to right click and hit advantage because I have the. Oh, I don't have advantage. But if you don't, just click on the initiative, boom, the box right under initiative, and it'll roll it for you. Uh, okay. Let's see. Uh, well, that's nice. It automatically populates the initiative in my tracker here. Oh, yeah. We roll it on D and D Beyond. Yeah. Yep. Very spiffy and handy. So I can stay on mute, and not have to tell you what I got. <laughs> Why? Okay, I can't. But we wouldn't miss hearing you. Right, so so the box should be right would underneath really? proficiency bonus. <laughs> Next to your armor class. Next to armor class, okay. I have initiative zero. Yep, yep. just click, so on click, it. click on the box. Oh, okay. Click on the box. There we go. Yep. And it should auto roll. Yeah, there you go. Beautiful. Yep, got you filled in. All right. Fang, what you got? I got nine. Nine. Davriel. Eleven. Okay, uh, between you and I up, have I'm assuming no you initiative. Have I have plus five. I have. Mm-hmm. And Gleep, what'd you got? 19. Uh, okay. All right. Well, our, our, our combat initiative order is. I had a 20, by the way, and Mayok had an 11 as well. Yeah, yep. For the listeners. So, for the, for Can't the listeners. See yeah, your I was just tracker. about to go. Yes, I was <laughs> just going to go through the initiative order. Yes, I do. Oh, I see. Yeah. No, I saw an arm. <laughs> okay. Uh, first up is uh, Durkris, followed by Gleep, followed by the big metal man, then Tavriel, then Mayok, and then Fang. So. Uh, Durkris, you just, uh, let's see, you're still holding on to the fan blade? Somebody better take this thing down! I'm very, very tired! Can <laughs> <laughs> you ra- rage to get advantage on checks? Or I guess it, it, you won't be able to keep it, right? 
Um, not unless I take damage. <laughs> Right. Yeah. yeah never mind. I'll, yeah. Really no, I'll, 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 I mean, I'll take you can your last. Smack me to keep me angry if you really want. But, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'll take your last success as your success for this round. Okay. Because you just rolled you. it. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Uh, Gleep. Are you awake? Yes. Okay. It's your turn. What do you want to do? Uh, uh, go through the fan blades and run down there and start fighting this thing. Okay. Make your. Uh, Roll to hit. Uh, okay. Uh, are you doing your usual grapple shenanigans? No, because um, Gleep is is pretty badly hurt. So I'm I'm going to um, I'm going to wind up using flurry of blows and uh, the drunken techniques, so I get the benefit of the disengage action. So I'm going to punch and run. Okay, gotcha. So uh, here is attack number one. Natural one. Uh, attack number two. Natural one. Oh, no. Wow. Oh, jeez. You're still disoriented. Uh, floor your blows. Attack number one. <laughs> that's my daughter. Uh, I got two ones this time. So that, that, that that's an 11. Uh, plus seven is 18. Uh, that hits. Uh, so it's uh, five points of magical bludgeoning. Then last attack. Oh, that's much. That's much higher. Uh, AC twenty-eight. Will also hit for five points of magical bludgeoning. Okay. And uh, I will move away from the monster, somewhere uh, not 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 on the pressure plate, in the other direction. Okay, out into the corridor. Okay. Yep, and that that is Cleep. Okay. Uh, he. Hmm. <laughs> What is... Well, it's not all that dumb. And he has his orders. But there's nobody else around. No, he's got his orders. He's going to stay put. And he seems to take a defensive stance. Devrio, you're up. Okay. Uh, she's going to stare at the creature and use oh. this new... Oh, wait. Yeah, sorry. You, you used the help action. Yeah, go ahead. Bye. Before we went into initiative. Yeah. Um, yeah. So she is going to stare at this thing and use her newfound power gifted to her by Wongo. And she's going to use her action to unleash a psionic assault on a creature she can see within 60 feet. Well, Target just... must succeed on a DC 16 wisdom saving throw or be stunned until the end of its next turn. Okay, so he has to make a DC 16 saving throw. Wisdom saving throw. Wisdom saving throw. Yep, yep. Gets an 8. All right. Stunned. All right, stunned. And Mayok and say, quick, go whale on it. Okay. <laughs> well, Mayok's up. Okay. Uh, so I have to shimmy through this thing. Uh, you don't have any problem getting through it with the fans not turning. Okay. So I'm going up to him and I'm going to him. Attack him with this advantage because he is stunned. Normal this... because he's also because he's taking because he oh because he's dodging. All he's right, dodging. I canceled it. It's all good. Okay. No. At least it's not disadvantage. Oh, just didn't roll it. And, uh, so that's the damage. So how do I roll an attack roll with it? I think if you click the hit DC, it rolls. Uh, yeah. Which I, I did, and it rolled just um, the damage, the 1d8. There. Yeah. Yeah, you, cl- you click on the uh, hit DC box, and it rolls the d20. Not and then the you damage click on the box. Damage and it oh. just rolls the damage. Okay, so... Click on... Oh, the hit DC box instead. (laughs) Ugh. Yeah, that's not going to do it. An 11 will not hit. All right, so luckily I have another attack. So let's try this again. Yeah, John, if you could... uh, Oh, is that a critical? (gasps) 
Yes. Paladins and criticals for the win. Yeah. All right. I'm definitely going to put a smite on that. Mm-hmm. Let's see. So roll the... T- I, I guess I have to do that first. The smite. Divine smite. Okay. And... I'm going to roll... That roll didn't roll critical damage, though. No, it won't. Um, you'll have to. You, you'll still have to do it and add it up if you don't have your dice in front of you. Okay, so I did one, so that was six, and I do this two more times. Um, what are you attacking with? Um, I'm doing a level. I only have a level two, so it's going to be a level two. Okay, so that should be four D eight plus double your damage dice. <clears throat> okay. So what? What was your damage dice? Uh, damage dice was D eight. So you got to roll D eight damage dice again, and then you've got to roll four more for the smite. Okay. So let's see Roll that again. Oh, look at the great one, and. Smite. So that's a total of seven. Seven was your your base damage? It was three first, plus the four. Okay. Okay. And your smite damage? And I'm rolling that now. Okay, so... I kind of don't like rolling these pretend dice. <laughs> you have real ones? <laughs> okay. Just switch over, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah right. and, and anybody using Need and Beyond, please call out your numbers as, as Prisera's suggestion, because that's mm-hmm. a very good idea. Yeah, because uh, I can't see it. It's not showing on my screen right now. All right. Um, um, if When we're looking at d and Beyond, you'll see, like, right next to the little anvil, there's a little, like, chat bubble that oh, is that has the all game the log things. that'll actually pull up everybody's roles for you. Oh, okay. Oh, shoot. It just went to Builder for me. Uh, no, don't you, click you on don't, the anvil. You don't want to click on the anvil. You want to click <laughs> on the little chat bubble next to the anvil. Go to the left of it. Oh, oh, there we all go. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm going to roll the four dice with normal dice because <laughs> like, I've had enough. It's more satisfying. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm still using my dice. All right. <laughs> same, same. So it's a D. You can tell that I play a lot out of online D and D because I'm so used to using the D and D Beyond dice. <laughs> so the people you play with um, ask for people to roll on D and D Beyond so everybody can see what it is, Sarah. Uh, yes, either that or through Roll Twenty or. Um... Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. So it is twenty-seven the other platforms that we use. Okay, is that 27 for the smite damage or grand total? Grand total. Did that include your modifier? Uh, 30 then. 30. <laughs> 30 damage. Let the That's man a, add his total. Damn good. It. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What else? Anything else? No, that's it. I only have two. Going to stay engaged? Okay. Gonna... Yeah. Well, he kind of has to unless he wants to. Take an opportunity attack. Uh, the guy can't react. He's stunned. That's true. So you could get away, Greg, if you wanted to, if you have the uh-huh. moment to do it. Um, I might move a, a little bit out of the way, just to his side. Fight. Okay. Well, there's not not much of a side. It's a five foot wide corridor. Go oh, in. gotcha. So I guess I'll stay where I'm at, yeah. at least. It, yeah. Okay. Uh, Fang, you are up. Okay. Uh, so I'm still stuck behind this fan. I don't think I have a... I don't think we determined if we had a rope that I could climb. So I'm going to... I'm going to cast Toll the Dead. Always a solid choice. Hey, you dick. Wait a second. (laughs) 
Is that an attack? Is that an attack roll, or do I have to make a save? Uh, it is a wisdom save. It is a wisdom save. DC sixteen. The sound of a bell, dong. He flinches. Roll damage. He's taken damage already, so it's D two D twelve. Uh, 14. Very nice. 14 necrotic damage. Nice. Nice. All right. He is bloody and... All right. Round two. Durkris, if you're still hanging on to the fan blade, uh, make a strike, make an athletic saving throw. Okay. Um, I will do that. Saving throw or check, John? Or check, sorry. Strength, a strength athletics check. Oh, well, it's like she's good. That would be a 28. That would do it. Strong, <laughs> strong like strong kobold. <laughs> I'm strong like strong kobold. Take this thing out, though. I don't like this fan blade. It's As you're holding on to the fan blade, it's still trying to turn. It's still holding on. You feel something pop. Oh. <laughs> Not her hand. Hopefully it's the fan. It's the fan <laughs> Interesting. Gleep. Uh, okay. Um, uh, let's see. The thing is bloodied. It's still stunned, right? Ow. It is still stunned. Uh, what is the duration of the stun? Until her end. Until your until your next turn, Gabriel. Uh, the stun was until the start of its ne- until. Until the end of its next turn. Until the end of its next turn. Yep. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'll yes. just try to do as much... Double stun it. <laughs> I'll try to do as much damage to it as I can. Triple stun. Okay. <laughs> AC 17. That will hit. Uh, seven magical bludgeoning. Seven magical bludgeoning. It's still up. Pop up. Uh, 13. 13 will miss. Uh, Flurry of blows. Flurry blow jobs. Not that I would want it on one of these things. Ew. <laughs> AC 24 for four magical bludgeoning. For four. Still up. AC 21 for 6 magical bludgeoning. Takes it. Uh, I will try to stun it on the last hit. Okay. <laughs> so it's a... Uh, Actually, technically all these should have been a disadvantage, but he's stunned, so whatever. Oh, that's right. The stun counter. Yeah, that's right. Uh, con, yeah, save DC have, fif- it, con save DC 15. Con save DC 15. He fails. Right. Okay. Cleave is done. Uh, I will Cleave will move away again. Okay. Uh, Tomb Guardian. With the, all the power it can muster, it does absolutely nothing because it's done. Go ahead. Gabriel. All right. Um... Uh... Let's see here. I am going to. Look at, I don't think I have anything fun with bonus action. Do, do, do. Or use that. Sorry, blown. I should have done some that. Yeah, no, nothing fun with bonus action. So I'm going to use my action to uh, prepare to help Dirk Chris to pull on that blade one more time if we have to. Okay. So you will help Dirk Chris on her next, on her next mm-hmm. turn. Okay. Mayak. All right, I'm going in for an attack again. Now you have advantage for reals. All right. Yep, because he was not able to take the dodge action, or the uh, whatever it is. Uh, all right. Let's see. So that's going to be to hit... It's 
So it's going to be 13 to hit. Clang, you're off his armor. All right, let's hack again. With advantage for the win. Okay, that is AC more. So it's going to be 24 to hit. That will hit. And it's going to be for six. He takes it. Uh, it is not looking so hot. A lot, pretty, pretty dented up right now. All right, and that's it for me. All right, Fang, what you want to do? Uh, once again, the corridor echoes with the chime of a bell. <laughs> so I cast Hold the Dead again. What's the uh, DC on that? Wisdom sixteen. Uh, he fails again. So go ahead and roll your damage. 13. Necrotic. Oh. He goes down onto a knee, but he's still got it. <laughs> Durkris, round three. Still I'm holding on to that fan Still holding blade. on with advantage. <laughs> make your. Yep. With Tavriel helping you, go ahead. Make your, make your uh, strength athletics. Oh. 17. Oh, no. With advantage? Yes, oh, no. I rolled oh. a three and a nine. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. Uh, well. <laughs> Maybe we can destroy what? this thing before it gets too bad. Maybe. Hopefully that crack wasn't my back. <laughs> I mean, we had already partially broken it, so there's the question. Well, we don't know that we broke it. He didn't say that. Heard a pop. Stop making assumptions, Kate. <laughs> it could be Dirk Chris's knee that pops. Uh, <laughs> Tap your spine. As the uh, no. as you, as you as the two of you are trying to hold on, um, it the the propeller just kind of shimmies and surges, and but the little surge is just too much for you to ma- to uh, manage to do it. So, oh no! Um, so your the propeller slips from your grasp um, and starts spinning again. And both of you, since you were both holding on to the fan blade, oh no! Take seven points of slashing damage. Ouchie! Ouch. Could have been worse. Yeah, this is true. Motherfucker! <laughs> and the fan starts. The fan starts to spin up again. Okay. <laughs> Uh, this could be bad because you guys are on the other <laughs> side of it. Anything else you want to do? Besides curse? Curse. Okay. <laughs> then bleep. Th- throw a... No, I can't throw a javelin as a bonus action. Okay. All right. <laughs> then bleep. Uh, are, are you doing the rules as written as far as grapple, being able to move people? I don't see why not. Okay, I'm gonna try to grapple the stupid thing. Hi, hi, sweetie, and and move it off of the pressure plate. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Which it actually will automatically fail its challenge against you because it is stunned. I believe um, that. They, I believe they that. automatically I believe that. fail. I believe it's true. Strength Dex- and dexterity oh, checks. Strength and dexterity yeah. checks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Gleep uh, <laughs> turn to, uh, basically like stretches down the hallway, wraps around the thing. <laughs> And then pulls it, um, I think half my speed. I think is what I can move it, or, or, or I'm trying to remember if it's five feet or if it's half my speed. Uh, let's see. Checking. Checking. Moving at grappled creature. When you move, you can drag or carry the grappled creature with you, but your speed is halved unless the creature is two or more sizes smaller than you. Okay, so I, I successfully uh, reach down and stretch out and grab the, the creature, and then I pull it uh, 20 feet down the hallway. Okay, you managed, um, you, I assume you're pulling it out of the hallway. Yep. So. Yeah, and, and then I still technically have one attack, so I'll, I'll pseudopod it. Okay. Pseudopod, the big metal man. They're big armored men. 
<laughs> uh, AC 12 is not going to hit though. AC 12 is not going to hit. Did you did you swing with advantage? I did. Oh. oh. <laughs> dice are not nice. Okay. I mean, I I get, I get that thing off of this pressure plate. I'm happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it is now its turn. Uh, did anything land us on? No. Actually, technically, he wasn't stunned for that grapple then. Yes, he was, because of... it's through the end of the monk's next turn. The, the monk's stun is different than the stun that I Correct. did. Yeah, so oh, Gleep's okay, turn. so that was to the end of Gleep's turn. Yeah, Gleep's turn. Was yeah, yeah. So now he's awake. Okay. Well, then this fun little rule comes into play, oh, no. uh, but doesn't do anything. Okay. Then he's going to do what these big things do, and he's going to take a swipe at the thing that's all wrapped up around him. Uh, let's see. Good. Attack number one. It's AC 13. Miss. Miss. And attack number two. It's AC 17. Hit. Hit. So, with that, as he slams down on you with the spike gauntlets, you take a 17 bludgeoning damage. Oh, damn. Gleep is Plus, a puddle again. <laughs> Gleep is a puddle. Plus another six piercing damage. Um, <laughs> I thought Greg no. healed you for like 20 something. No, he didn't, honey. He handed oh. you for 14. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh <laughs> sadness. Oh. And. Gah, 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 gah. Uh, bleh. And for his movement, he returns to his previous orders and walks back over onto. What, what, what is his speed? 30 feet? Yeah. Yeah, he can easily walk back over and stand back on the pressure plate again. <laughs> Although Mayak is still standing on it as well, so it is still speeding up. Tavrio! Um, let's see here. So the fan's coming up to speed. Mm -hmm. It has uh. not reached full speed yet. All right. And did you say that it's something that we can try to stop it both with acrobatics or athletics? Oh, that's kind of... Yeah, to, well, it's... It's a, it's a strength check to try to hold the thing. Uh, but they don't they don't give me rules on what to do if you're trying to grab hold of it while it's starting to spin out. Okay. So I'm kind of winging that one. Um... If I was going to try to get through it while it isn't spinning at full speed, is that an acrobatics check? Um, to jump through while it is starting to spin up, it is an acrobatics check. Okay. Uh, YOLO. <laughs> All right. There we go. That is not wonderful. That's not wonderful at all. Oh, uh, jeez. So that's going to be a 13, because I rolled a sweet 4. <sighs> John's counting his dice. That's not good. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. As you Two fatalities. <laughs> as you try to jump through the blades, you unfortunately uh, uh, slip on some remnant of glee. <laughs> At least on the other side, like way far away. <laughs> yeah, but he was kind of in a bit of a puddle there. He leaked a bit. And it's funnier that way. Right, yes. right. <laughs> seems about right. Um, so the timing doesn't quite work out. You get wanged by the, uh, uh, by the by one of the blades as you try to jump through. And oh, you're not gonna like this. Oh no. It's a very significant pregnant pause, as the saying goes. Right. And take 46 slashing damage oh. as that Ooh. blade slams into you. Okay. Uh, very bloody. Still standing. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, so rethinking this, she's going to kind of like almost... Oh, you made it through. You just took the damage. 
Oh, I did. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. Uh, well, she's gonna keep moving and uh, swing on Mr. Metal McMetalface. Okay, swing away. Well, DM looks for the dice he dropped. <laughs> we might fire that dice though. That dice tried to get me killed. All right. Uh, Let's do that. Uh, there it is. Unarmed combat. So, it's a d6. It feels like a little bit. Sure, sure. Alright. AC20 to hit. AC20 will hit. Nine magical fists. Okay, with that uh, fist of vengeance, you slam down on the uh, head of the uh, weird metal thing and you crumple it. Yes. Okay. Uh, Alright, and then let's see here. Yep. Uh, because she still has movement left, because she's got 45 feet of movement, she's going to rush over to Buddy Gleep and burn a key point again. <laughs> <laughs> So, or, or burn a key point once because I didn't do it the last time, I think, because someone healed him, right? Or did... I healed. Yeah, that's right. I could. You you healed him the first time. All right. I don't want to penalize myself when I shouldn't. So, all right. Um. So yeah, you get if I find the ability because I am a squirrel. Uh, positions tough. Um, I'm feeling. Why can't I even find that? That's super. Sorry. I think it's a D6 plus something. I'm just trying to confirm what it is. D6 plus two. All right. So, <laughs> Gleep, you got three hit points, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. I got, I got, I got. <laughs> I say, may I get off the plate so it stops spinning? <laughs> okay. <laughs> get off the plate. Okay, yeah. Uh, you managed to uh, drag, uh, get everything off the pressure plate, and the fan uh, spins back down again. Now you just have to <laughs> figure out how to get this weird, this uh, kobold and. Uh, <laughs> And, go- and goblin thing out of the uh, out from behind the van. I, I say, you, the voice in my head, you, you said you wanted to help us. How do we disable this thing? Disable? Why would you want to do that? <laughs> Throw something in it. I don't know. What happens to you if Jump I into die? It. <laughs> let the let the <laughs> let the corpses hold the fan blade. Can we? Put the golem in the fan blade to hold it. And we need I, I, we need to drag it off of the the plate. But I'm strong enough. I can might be able to heft it with some help. I think, given it chopped living beings, it's not going to. <laughs> <laughs> golem will just get chopped to pieces, and, and Durkers will get blasted with golem bits. <laughs> she might be able to get out while it's not turning, though. I mean, we can we can get the golem off the pressure plate, and and though it's a bit of a gamble, Gleep and I could use our monk cheese to get back through and hold it so that everybody else can escape, and then use our monk cheese to get back out again. That's how we got in. It's a bit of a gamble, though, because if we screw up, we're both probably dead. <laughs> Chris is all for that plan. <laughs> <laughs> so it was Wongo. Yeah, do it. <laughs> it's like Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> <laughs> so Chris, is that the plan? Are we are we gonna wall jump down there and get through and then try to hold it so everybody else can escape? Sure. <laughs> okay. I'm the two monks, out. 
the two monks, uh, monkey monk down the hallway uh, yeah. by jumping off the walls and uh, dive through the uh, through the fan. Okay, Before we so. send Fang through, I'm going to say, can you do any other healing for both of us, just so that we're not quite as crunchy? Yeah. Fang, I'm you're muted. You, uh, uh, I don't got much left, but. I assuming you pull him across. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, we don't make him fall in the pit. <laughs> okay. I mean... All right, so the hell? Stop doing it. All right, so cast a healing word on who's worse off. Uh, Gleep, definitely. All right, so I cast a healing. Oh God damn it! I'm just sitting at a desk at a computer. <laughs> Go away. Hey, John, I got a question. Gleep heals for you six. Chocolate Gleep, Gleep right? thanks you. <laughs> um, if, if no one is on the pressure plate and we try to pull the fan in the opposite direction of how it moves, does it does it move or does it resist being pulled backwards? I don't see that it would resist being pulled backwards. Okay. I didn't know if it was something where maybe there's gear work that we could try to break if, if the pop was anything relevant. So, okay. All right. So, let's see here. Who out of Fang and, and May or Dirkers who have to get through has the better hit points just in case we don't manage to hold it? I have, tw- outside. I have 24. Dirkers. You're muted. I'm at 16 hit points. Probably okay. Darkus needs some. What's that? Probably Darkus needs some loving hit point restoration. I mean, I've got a couple healing potions if anybody wants to take them, but I can also save those to get someone up if something goes wrong. So. Well, yeah, but you'd also have to take an action to do that, which we may not have, so... I still have a couple healing words that I can use, but I'm not using them now. I mean, yeah, it's fine. Pretty much uh, save them you, for when someone goes down. Uh, you guys decide between the two of you. I'm going to help Gleep hold this when one of you gets through and gets on the pressure plate. I don't know if there's room for you both to go at the same time. DM would have to make a roll on that. Well, we're out of combat, so it's not uh, a huge... Is, yeah, I mean, is there a gap on both sides where they could both go through? I don't see why not. Okay, both of you guys. I mean, or... it's it's technically it's a five foot corridor, so unless you'd have to squeeze. So. Yeah. You guys decide, one after the other. Somebody gotta go. Go ahead, Derek Chris. Okay, I'm going. I guess. Okay, as you you jump through the. Uh, you run through the fan blade and you step on the pressure plate and the fan starts to spin up. Right, but I assume so. you just keep on going. Yeah, I'm just going to keep running. Yeah, just keep right on going. You run out and as you as you do, you manage to get out uh, before the fan comes well, up to full speed. I again. was helping Gleep to hold it so that it wouldn't spin when it starts to spin up. Oh, I missed that. Yeah. Why, okay. why would you bother? <laughs> oh, it, it, there's time to actually get through without it spinning up? Yeah, that's that Dur, never mind. <laughs> I was yeah, you're not going to hit the ground until you hit the ground okay, on the other so, side. Right, so you get off the plate and let it spin down. Then we do the same with my... All right, never mind. I, Dur, that's why I'm like, yeah. why are we even discussing this? Like, <laughs> Just go through one at a time. my brain is not braining today, and I was trying to get Gleep and I killed because then it would make me happy. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> well, hey, if you want to dive into the fan, go right for it. <laughs> And Let's no one's see. seen committing I'm, I'm, I'm not going to suicide leap. <laughs> it's, it's an, that's another 12d10 damage. Let's see what we got going on. Da, 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 da. Suicide, suicide leap. I was kidding, John, you goober. It's no, my no. Suicide, suicide leap. Eight. 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 Okay, I've, I've only got 8d10s out here. You're lucky. I would give okay. you a certain hand signal, but my daughter's watching. <laughs> Oh, she's, she's not, not even attention. looking at the screen. 
but I appreciate the sentiment. Thank you. <laughs> okay. You are okay. So you find yourself uh, back on the balcony um, in the large, uh, what was it, uh, 30-ish foot, 40-ish, 50-ish foot room, 50-foot room, whatever okay. it is. Um, to uh, to your right um, is you, the uh, uh, the balcony overlooks the stairs uh, going down to level two, and of course you have the uh, various columns that you've are corridors that you've already explored. Okay. Say. So. Alrighty then, tomb divers. Uh, managed to make your way out of the uh, uh, spinning blades of doom and as far as you know there isn't too much that you haven't explored up on this level unless there's any particular places that caught your interest that you want to check out again Hmm. Eh. well there was that chest being hung by the ceiling Tavriel thinks a minute and drinks one of her potion bottles of water from the fountain. Okay. Bit out of the blue, but all right. We're near to it, so if it does something good, we can go get as much of the water as we can get. Or she's going to die. One or the other. We'll see. Okay. Kate's like, maybe today's the day. She's just going to die. <laughs> Nope. You're not feeling so good, so you're thinking, oh, maybe this, maybe this water will help me in some way. Uh, so you pop the top off, you quaff a bottle of water, uh, and as you do, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> um, okay. As you drink the bottle of water, um, it is quite cool and refreshing still, and very tasty water. But, uh, however, you suddenly start to feel a little heavy in the pants. She's pooping? No. <laughs> she, grew a pe- she grew a penis? She grew a penis. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> what? Seriously? Um, yep. The as the uh, wow. Um, as, as you drink the water, you suddenly find yourself feeling very masculine. Oh. <laughs> okay. The, the, uh, I, I the, feel the funny. Water has, What's happening? <laughs> the the water has changed your sex. Oh. Not much of a different shade, shaved head. <laughs> no. <laughs> Nobody can tell the difference, though. Oh. <laughs> Except you. Well, she's an elf. They're so androgynous anyway. <laughs> Derek, Chris, you should take some of that just in you case you know, change your mind. Just a little bit lower. <laughs> <laughs> I have I a think... funny feeling that something is wrong. <laughs> Did something happen? Huh. Well, Terriel may be a man's man. <laughs> I, I, I feel like there's a change in the aura of our party or something. I don't know. Something's wrong. <laughs> her cod piece is bulging a little. <laughs> 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 She's not Almost. wearing armor. There's not much to hide in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, then. I, I don't know what any of you are talking about. Everything's perfectly fine. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well okay. then. Okay, down to level two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is that what it's called? I don't recommend well. the water. <laughs> <laughs> don't with, drink no. the water. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with your uh, enhanced testosterone in the party, you uh, make your way around the uh, uh, banister, or whatever you want to call it, sort of thing, um, down to uh, two of the stairs. And you descend this, and uh, you descend the stairs into the next level of the dungeon. I'm curious. Did she lose her breasts? Yes, she's, she is a man. Okay. 
shouldn't have a ton in the first place. He's a man. Yes. <laughs> no. So it's okay. So it's not. So it's not so noticeable. <laughs> I mean, monk, monks are bound, right? That's like. Right. <laughs> With no booby armor. <laughs> The little the Adam's apple up here, you know. Yeah, <laughs> your, uh, your chainmail bikini grew into a regular chainmail shirt. Uh, yeah. Uh, like, no. <laughs> She's feeling a little more spry than usual. Oh my goodness gracious! <laughs> um, okay. Balls of fire? No, too soon. Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> took, it took me a while to get it. Okay. As you descend the stairs down into the next level of the dungeon, any last remnants of light that might have been permeate, uh, seeped into the levels are completely vanished, and the area and the area is complete as a has a level of darkness that is oppressive that you can you almost has weight to it it's advanced darkness um through the light of the torch and through your various uh dark visions uh you uh see uh, mocking devil faces uh, have been graven into the walls and the air reeks of rotting flesh uh. As you get to the bottom of the stairs, you, f you can see that the pit to your, uh, uh, to your right continues down into the dark depths below. Um, a corridor goes off to the left, to your left, um, and ahead of you, you can just make out another corridor heading straight off to the east. That is as much as you can see from, let's see, actually, no. What's the range on your dark vision? 60 feet? Yeah. Okay. Um, to the south, you uh, see what looks like a oddly ornate door. Mm. Um, and on the western wall, you see stair, additional stairs uh, descending into the depths below. So the corridor to the left is to the north. Correct. To cover all four directions. Okay. Yep. It's just easier for me to track it that way. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, okay. Oh. Are you... And one more thing. Um, on the uh, middle of the western wall, um, the uh, light of the torch uh, reflects on a plaque. Uh, let's go over and check out the plaque. <laughs> I agree. Okay. So you go and look at the plaque. This is what you see. Wait a minute. Uh, in, uh, there's a link to it in chat. Uh, ignore, uh, oops, that was a direct message. Hang on, let me resend that to everyone. Okay. Uh, ignore the first line. I am not doing that particular part of the tomb. <laughs> that would just It's just a waste of time for everybody. Okay, so the plaque reads, uh, except that first line, the dead abhor sunlight. Uh, only a jewel can tame the frog. Um, bow as the dead god <clears throat> entombed. Bow, into, yeah, bow as the dead god entombed. Right, right, gotcha. Into darkness descend. Okay. And it's abhor, you whore. <laughs> abhor, yes. Abhor. Abhor, abhor you whore. Ab abhor your butt. <laughs> yeah, a new set um, of, of hints. Hmm. So where do we see a frog? We haven't seen a frog yet. Not yet. Although I think in all those cubes there probably was a frog. So maybe there's a frog god somewhere down here. I claim that one. 
Okay. So, uh, what about the ornate door? Okay, you want to head to the southern door. As long as nobody objects, yeah. Click, click, leave, leave is curious. Okay. Okay, so having bypassed the other two corridors on the way to the plaque, you decide to just continue on down to the southern door. Um, as you um, as you approach the door, uh, you hear uh, guttural moans coming from behind it. Three. Yeah. A what? A guttural moans. Brains. Zombies. Oh no. Does it say dead inside on the door? <laughs> it might as well. Um, Three oval holes are carved into a nine-foot-wide, nine-foot-high stone door um, at human head height. As you approach, three humanoid heads stick out of the holes, each covered in putrid flesh and gnashing on an iron bit bolted to a chain bridle. Cool. Oh my goodness. <laughs> mm. I, was well, making, I, I was making a Walking Dead reference. <laughs> I, I love it. <laughs> Why are these things so, here? We've already heard that the dead abhor sunlight. Oh. I'm well, not carrying. I can, just, I, can you, Greg? Do you have it? I can make daylight. Do you have a spell slot high enough for it? My spell slots I have left are two. Oh, no. I don't. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> can I perceptify the, the door, John, just to, just, you know, to see if I can see anything interesting? Uh, the door itself looks like a... Uh, out, it's not much to uh, see on the outside. It just looks like a very large stone... Slab. This is really more of a door. Oh, okay. All right. So it's just one giant, solid, nine by nine slab. Mm-hmm. And there's some zombie heads sticking out of it. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um. Uh, <coughs> Mayak, if you're bringing a torch close to them, do they do they react to Mayak's torch? Uh, they do not react to Mayak's torch, though they do attempt to lunge at Mayak. Through the, uh, through the get hole. back, you vile ah, things! Ah. Get back! Get but they back. seem to be, <laughs> but they seem to be held back by whatever is, but not not only by the doors, but by whatever they're chained up is wrapped around the whatever this harness that's on their head. So they're like pets. Hmm. To every I'll see. dangle your new penis in front of them. <laughs> Don't tell her to dangle it. <laughs> dangle you. Uh, so, so what's what's on the door? Is, is there writing or glyphs? Or you said so there's devil faces like kind of all over the place. Um, that's just the motif of the walls. Gotcha. This this is kind of devil fa- devil's faces and this pervasive odor of rot. But there's nothing written on the door that says beware or any of that. Uh, nope, the door is otherwise unadorned. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna bow. I'm gonna bow down in front of these uh, undead heads. The zombies try to bite you, but they can't quite reach you. <laughs> All right, bow as the dead god in tone. Little bites? Mm. Guess not. Who has um? I might have something, but I don't have enough spell slots. Who, who, yeah, who, who does radiant damage? Anybody have anything with sunlight? I, I do. Did you, you burned your fourth level slot, Greg? I thought you were... I only have three level slots, so I don't have any four. 
Oh, okay, I thought you said you had daylight for some reason. I, thought I do, but I don't have any spell slots above two. Great. Do you, do you have the? Did you say that your that your particular subclass gives you cantrips? Uh, yes. What do I do? have? Word of radiance. Uh, which does radiant damage, right? Yeah, I'm resistance. Hold on, let me look. Uh, you utter a divine word, and burning radiance erupts from you. Each creature of your choice that you can see within range must succeed on a Constitution saving throw or take one d6 radiant damage. The spell's damage increases by one d6 when you reach level five. And eleven, so okay. it's two d six. So I think Sarah was suggesting that if somebody can do radiant damage to them, that that might be that like, might be like sun light. Yeah. Well, I can do that. I can do it. Do it. Yeah. All right. I cast a word of radiance on them. Word of radiance. Okay. Oh, I spell DC this fifteen. <laughs> well, good news. It's a cantrip, so you could just do it all day long. Take them out. <laughs> really need a hidey hole for a long rest at this point. I don't know if we're going to get it. Doesn't seem like it. Sucks to say it, but the room we were in might have been the place. Oops. <laughs> we we get we get it. <laughs> uh, I'm honestly not quite certain how to call this one. That's why you get paid the big bucks. That is why you get paid the big bucks. All right. Uh, word of Radiance. It's a uh, saving throw. Right? Wisdom yes. saving? Wisdom saving it's throw? It's a con save. Con save. Okay, well, I don't think a five is going to cut it. No, DC 6 is 15. So, okay, well, uh, roll your damage. D6. Four damage. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the zombies kind of flinch back and seem to withdraw their heads from the hole for a moment. And as they do, um, you can see through the holes that they kind of run away for a little bit and that there is a chain attached to them. Uh, and as they're running away, the door kind of shiver shimmers shivers a little bit it seems to lift start to lift up but then the zombies uh turn um reco- uh, recover their wits turn around and uh, uh stick their heads to the hole and continue trying to bite at you oh. does that mean we have so to we go need, in there we need no we need actual sunlight to scare them bad enough so that they'll actually pull the door open uh oh, Greg, Greg do you have do you have turn on do you have turn on dead Greg <clears throat> as, as your channel divinity option uh let's see he's a vengeance paladin so yeah. I don't think so Chris no what kind of crappy paladin are you playing Greg well <laughs> abjure enemy as an action choose one creature within 60 feet of you Fiends and undead have disadvantage on the saving throw, so I could do that. Well, uh, turn, turn undead makes them run as far as they can. I'm sure. If your character doesn't have turn undead, then, it, then it's fine. No, it does not. Yeah. Okay. You've burned through another couple of torches, by the way, Greg. Oh, great. Uh, okay. Uh, do you want to go back and check one of the other corridors? <laughs> I don't think we have any way to produce on that right now. So, um, no. if uh, if people don't object, um, what, what what was the next closest corridor, John, that we passed? Uh, you, from where you are, the next closest corridor is the eastern corridor. And what 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 can Gleep see sixty feet down the corridor? Uh, you. Uh, you for the full sixty feet that you're looking down the corridor, um, you just see corridor. But about thirty feet down or so, you can just barely make out that there's a uh, couple of turnoffs. 
was a tr- on, each, on each side, so it was like a uh, I got gotcha. X. I got gotcha. you. Um, I'm gonna go look. I'm gonna go start on the um, the other corridor that we passed just to see what what I see down there as well. <clears throat> um, from there, uh, looking down the uh, corridor, you looks you can see just barely make out that there is a room that looks like it has some kind of statue or something from where you are you're not quite sure okay I, I tell people about that and I say are people cool with um, going down and checking out this room uh, Kate you're still muted sure why not which one well it can't be any worse than where we are right now okay so I guess uh, we'll go down a little further and, and see what we can see. Can people hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the northern corridor then? We're going on the northern corridor? Uh, the one that looked like there was a statue or something down yep. there, yeah. Okay, yep. That's the northern corridor. Yep, yep. Were there other rooms too that you were describing, John? I'm sorry, I'm half into feeding a baby right now. Uh, the other thing I described was the uh, eastern corridor, which all you could see from the end of the corridor was a long corridor, but about... 30 feet down or so, it looked like there were a couple of branches on either side. <clears throat> so, anyway, okay. Through the darkness and gloom, you work your way uh, down the uh, northern corridor until you find yourself in a fairly small 15 foot square room. The walls and floor of this 15-foot square room are cracked and carved with images of terrified humanoids falling. Set into the middle of this floor is a stone bas-relief of a bearded devil face, painted green. Forlorn cries echo from the black void of its gaping maw. Mm. (laughs) More devil faces. (laughs) like this guy has a uh, <laughs> a motif <laughs> a motif yes and you um, said it was a green face yep like painted f- green like a frog green face uh kind of more like a uh patina green oh. <laughs> well, like this might be copper that oh it's definitely Either. paint but you know oh and, and so, so, so this face is this face is like <laughs> is on the floor in the middle of the room. It is on the floor with this gaping mouth, um, from which uh, all you look at, from which all you can see is darkness. But you said we heard hear stuff coming out of the sound, right? Indeed, forlorn cries echo from the black void of its gaping maw. Any additional um, corridors? Uh, nope. Not that you can see. Yes. Okay. Um, Perceptify the room. Okay. You would take some time to examine around the room. Uh, the, uh, I mean, it's pretty easy to tell that simply because your dark vision doesn't penetrate it, uh, that the uh, darkness inside the devil's mouth is once again magical in nature. Um, but, uh, actually, yeah, go ahead and roll, per- roll perception. Perception. Nobody in this party took dispel magic, eh? <laughs> hey. Well, I might have it, but I haven't been able to change my spells. Uh, uh well, Gleep, yeah. Gleep got a 21 perception. Okay. Uh, you're pretty certain then that, uh, the room is is otherwise enclosed. But there are no other, no other exits to the room. Okay. I'll, um... Let's see. I don't actually have many weapons. Um, we have suggested that somebody, like, stick the end of a weapon in that mouth just to see if it does anything. What about a torch? You could do that, too. If you got one lit, you can just see what, what the thing that <laughs> going in there does. Oh, yeah, sidebar. How many darts do you have, Gleep? Four. Avril would probably ask if you're willing to spare a couple just so she doesn't have nothing for a ranged weapon. Sure. I mean, he. Gleep, Gleep gives you two. Yeah. 
And you got to speak with a deeper voice now. Yeah, you're a dude <laughs> now. You can call hey, her Ty. Come on, identifies as a girl, man. Call you Trag. Excuse me. Trevor. Greg did the whole girl Dark voice Chris, thing. Dark Chris you... is very upset about all of this, you know, gender bias you guys are having right now. <laughs> <laughs> Matisse had a, a, a decent uh, female Drew, voice. Drew, you're in your yes. gender conformity. <laughs> <laughs> Just a biological fact. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> Gabriel probably still has lots of estrogen in there. Whether he has he's got an Adam down <laughs> now. Oh my God, Greg, stick a thing in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sticking speaking my of, speaking of the goals. The- <laughs> All right, you you stick Light your that lit flame. torch. Yeah, okay. You stick your lit lit torch into the hole. And uh, Mayok, for you, the room is instantly engulfed in darkness. Oh, okay. That doesn't help me. Just, just for him, though. Just for him. Hi. Everybody else still sees what's going on because of their dark vision. So uh, we can see the torch in the oh, gotcha. in the hole. <laughs> yep. Well, Mayok's got his torch stuck down into the hole. But we right. can't see anything in the hole, right? Correct. Uh. So it, it doesn't basically it doesn't uh, do anything. Yeah, well, I mean, Gleep tells you that it's that that it's obviously magical darkness, and it's and, you, and your torchlight is snuffed out because it's magical darkness. That's basically it, <laughs> which we kind of already knew. I think yeah. what he's trying to say is that it could still be burning in there. Yeah. Right. So if you if, if you lift it out, what happens, Greg? I lift it out. The room is illuminated by your torch. Cool, do it again, do it again. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lights on, lights on, lights on, lights on, lights on, lights on. Okay, so, so um, I... Oh, I like a light switch. <laughs> is, is, the, is this gaping maw on the floor, like, big enough for, like, if we, like, throw a rope down it, could a medium-sized creature, like, like fit inside the mouth? Um, it is a five foot wide. Uh, By medium sized creature, you're talking about the dirt press. I'm not. I'm not oh, sure where I want to do this again. <laughs> um, so yes, if you toss a rope down there, you think somebody could climb down it? A medium sized creature shouldn't have any problem. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, Gleep's take is that he wants to explore every level, and that probably goes down to another level. So he suggests maybe we go to the other uh, to the other passageway. Unless anybody really wants to go down there, in which case, go for it. Although, the plaque did say to go into the darkness, but it does seem scary down there, but it does say to go into the darkness. So the darkness descend, yeah. But I'm not sure I want to be the one to go down there. I don't know why you have to keep fighting me. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, the, 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 the plaque does say into darkness descend, so. There, Chris, inspiration. <laughs> but there's always howling things down there. I don't think that I would want to see what's causing them to howl. I mean, I like to howl when I'm having a good time, but for some reason, I'm feeling really insecure about going into dark places right now. I don't know why I ended up with this city in my head. <laughs> All right, so who has the most hit points? Uh, <laughs> nobody. Not me. <laughs> I'm at 24. Gleepa's uh, nine. Gleepa's nine. nine. I have nine. 28. 16. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, may I get in the hole? <laughs> may I get in the hole, be like. Is there only no one entrance to this room way. besides the mouth? Correct. Nothing followed that torch in and out. Maybe we try to sleep. Here, how long has it been? <laughs> mm, you're starting to feel a little tired. Mm, could do that. Is that a watch? Um, I was going to let you guys play around with the hole a little bit more, but <laughs> <laughs> that's what she said. Whoa. I mean, I do like playing with holes. I could throw a javelin down there and see if it <laughs> sounds like anything got hit. <laughs> That that might work actually, if it has a bottom. We're going to dig a poop in the hole. 
Um, all right, do you guys want to try to take a rest? It's magical dark, not magical like uh, silence that we know of. I could go <laughs> for a rest. <laughs> I mean, we 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 can try. I, I I doubt we'll get it, but okay. All right, I think we're gonna try for a long rest in this room, John. Okay. Let's see. That will be eight hours. I mean, I, th- I think logically, if we were actually in this situation, we'd be like trying to find a place to rest. Right, eight I, hours. It makes sense. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to call you on medicating for this one. You guys are obviously very hurt, and <laughs> it is. Rough, and you can man. tell it's pretty. You can tell it's getting kind of late in the evening. <clears throat> Both of your tanks are at like twenty hit points. <laughs> I think we'd be looking for a chance to rest. <laughs> okay. All right, so. Your tiny murderous dinosaur is very hurt. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Are there any preparations you wish to make? Who's taking what watch? Um, We each need to get at least six hours of continuous rest, correct? I, I only need to transfer four, and I can stand watch for four. Okay. Well, I can't see in anything but where the torch is, so I might not be of much help. But I also have the potions of watchful rest. Let me read up on those again. Hang on. I bought, I think, five of them. May not want to waste those yet, but fair. Um, yeah, I mean, the people with dark vision can take the watches, Greg, and you could probably. You know, not take a watch if you if you want to, because Tabrielle can basically take half the watch all by herself, and then me, me and Dirkris and Fang can take the other four hours. Yeah, I mean, I like the idea of two people being on watch at any time if we can manage that. But if we can't, then we'll we'll make do. I I think only one will be fine. Yeah, if one person is watching, they can wake up everybody else. Yeah, we're in a very small space, so that'd be very easy to do. Okay. Who is overkill? <clears throat> or is it? Dun dun dun. Maybe it's underkill. <laughs> 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 Maybe Dorcris is secretly trying to kill you all. <laughs> oh, sorry. Ironically, I have potions of watchful rest, and I'm reading that they don't have an effect on elves. <laughs> no. <laughs> I actually got them for you guys, apparently. <laughs> no, you didn't. They, they have all the benefits that she already has. So, it's, uh, yeah, it makes okay. sense. Uh, you cracked me up. Okay. So, I so guess. Also, uh, go ahead. Uh, Mayok, as the only one who is wearing medium or heavy armor, are you actually, are you going to be sleeping in your armor? Uh, well, you know. I wouldn't want a brown trowel out there so everyone can look at all my stuff. <laughs> but, <laughs> We're only going to see it in black and white anyway. <laughs> if, Greg <took> potion, <laughs> if Greg took a potion, would he still get the benefits of the rest even if he doesn't take his armor off? Uh, sorry, I, read to me again the description. Okay, yeah, so when, when you drink this potion, you gain the following benefits for the next eight hours. Magic can't put you to sleep, and you can remain awake during a long rest and still gain its benefits. Mm. You can sleep for a. You can just stay awake for a whole eight hours and get rested. Mm-hmm. Can I get one of those in real life? Seriously, <laughs> no, right? uh, it's called an eight-hour energy. <laughs> I, guess, I know. Drink that nos. has side effects. Consequences. <laughs> um, I would say since uh, since he doesn't have to actually try to sleep in his armor, he'll get the benefits of a of a. Uh, re- I'll get the full benefits of a long rest. Okay, so Tavriel gives you a quick potion and says, here, take this, friend. <laughs> Good job, team. Good job. Thank you, Terriel. Like, <laughs> handing you B12 shots, man. <laughs> Strangely, your who, voice people... sounds very deep today. <laughs> is it B12 or is it testosterone? <laughs> Just hang on. I'll put in the corner for a second. <laughs> but she stays standing. 
Okay, so it's gonna be it's gonna be Mayock and Tavriel for four hours, right? <laughs> and then somebody else and Mayock for the other four hours. <laughs> yeah. Mayock, I hope you're a good conversationalist. He's, he's talking about church. <laughs> Take me to church. I really, okay. you, um, people who are going to shuffle spells start thinking about how you're going to shuffle spells. Like, well, can, can, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other defensive measures? Um, I don't think I have anything that's like a watch spell. I don't know if anybody else. Let me check the scrolls. Yeah, I, I have nothing. Make sure, I'm not. Um, that's the sex is I can't change the spells until we actually get the full rest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Until, until, yep, you don't get the benefits until the rest is complete. Yeah, we need to make sure we actually get the rest. <laughs> and which we don't really know if we're going to get the rest. Do you want us to give you uh, an order, John? Uh, a watch rotation. Uh, uh, didn't you just say, to, uh, Mayak and Tavriel was the first one you said? Staying yeah. away for the first yeah. period of time, and then but then the other but then the other four hours we'll, we'll probably yeah. switch off between um, the other three of us during that time. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Tavriel might trance first if we can shuffle that only because if she gets sure. the trance sure. done, she'll have all her benefits <laughs> back. <laughs> sure, that's fine. Sure. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Gleep is gonna do the first hour with Mayak. Okay. The first two. Uh, sure, the first two. Yeah. Sure. Mm. Yes. Leap. Dirk I'll, do, or, or I'll do whatever. Okay, so 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 Gleep the first two hours with Mayok, Fang the next two hours with Mayok, and then Tavriel with Mayok for the other four hours. Yeah. Right. Okay, so first watch. Dinosaur sleeping. Don't don't bother me. <laughs> first watch is quiet. Yeah. Second watch. Yay. Okay. Is quiet. Yes. <laughs> Third watch. The Tavriel now up to full. Ah. Is energetic. Um, is I've quiet. Got my long rest. And last watch. He's quiet. Yes. Look at that. Nice. Oh, <laughs> wow. Did we actually just luck out that hard? You did. <laughs> Holy <Wow>. cow, guys. <laughs> ah, tiny oh, dinosaur please. feels so much better. better. Ah. Fang, Fang, were you able to shuffle light into your rotation? Uh, I... I know we just figured out that we got a long rest, so I haven't been able to do anything yet. Okay. <laughs> Fair <laughs> price, thanks. No. Give the man a break. Kate, Kate's uh, okay. Light is a cantrip, isn't it? Yeah, I can't, I can't, can't swap change out, out cantrips, cantrips. Unless I level oh. up, I think. Well, I still yeah. have daylight in mine. Just... Yeah, that's, that's not going to help you to find your way through the tomb, Greg. No, but it might be useful for nastiness. All right, yeah. so... Zombies, and at yeah. least you've got all of our torches, so you've got, oh. like, 50 hours of light, theoretically speaking. What about Dispel Magic? Uh, <laughs> Can anybody rotate that in? Yeah. That. <laughs> Anything else we've been saying? Oh, geez, why don't we have this spell? Luna I'm wants to know to if anybody has Dispel Magic. <laughs> Are you casting a kitty? With all this magical darkness, we might want to have a little Dispel Magic oh, on hand. Yes, <laughs> right, I, well. I will prepare that. <laughs> <laughs> I have to prepare something else. Uh, uh, like, like, you don't need Revivify, you'll never use it. For example. Okay. So I will unprepare that. <laughs> but we're not allowed to use it, right? Yeah, exactly. He had it in his prepared list, so this is the oh. opportunity to pop it out for something else. Which, I mean, that's a good default. It's what a paladin would normally Oh, it's use, definitely so something you would yeah, normally yeah. want. But these are not normal times. No. We're normal people. No. Uh, uh, elemental uh, weapon, I don't, I don't know. What are you doing, ham sandwich? Magic circle. <laughs> What's that? So we do successfully get the rest, right, John? We, you do manage to get the rest. Okay. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, wow, I was so hoping that, I was hoping that Gleep would die. I, I know. Gleep. I tried really hard. I really tried hard. I'm hey, you to even got spun off the fan. I did. I did. I, I think Gleep's been unconscious like six times. I even have a backup um, character ready now. Oh, awesome. 
Ace of Terror, I should gain back. There is, there is one, yeah. one thing though. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Well, we'll go over that once you guys have yourselves. Settled. A, uh, <clears throat> kind of Christmas. What creeped out of that mouth? Staying is... a night in the tomb has cost. <laughs> It's probably like it's probably the gods in your heads are wanna are gonna do something. <laughs> yeah. oh, Greg, you said you said you're preparing to spell magic? Yes. Alright. Oh, I can also prepare daylight. <laughs> Alright, I have aid. I wonder if that will be useful. Thunder smite. Uh, I don't think any of the smites really do anything. The well, smites can be useful, but generally the normal smite is better, especially gonna, given we're in a place with lots of undead. Oh my goodness! I'm gonna unprepare two for cats. The smite. We got two cats. Oh. Look at two that. cats came to say hi. Oh. Two cats on camera. <laughs> Three cats. Topes. Topaz. <laughs> we had a topaz too. <laughs> a Luna, a topaz, and a Bugatti. Protection from poison that might be useful. Oh, Tope. Oh, Luna. I mean, you definitely want your restoration spells, Greg. You definitely want daylight because now we could potentially go back and get into that other door if yeah, we want to. Prepared. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> definitely want your healing spells, so cure wounds and whatever else. The cure wounds is all I really have. <laughs> the cure wounds is good, man. Um, I took Revivify out, so no. uh, I have aid. Um, Divine favor. I wonder if that will help. I think I think Cleve is going to try something reckless. <laughs> uh oh. Okay. What's Cleve going to do? Uh oh. Is he going to go in a hole? Chris <laughs> is like, I want my character to die. I have nothing else to it's do like, to try and make him die. Fine. He's going to rest. If John's not going to kill him, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, th I think it'll be fun if it if it works the way I hope it works. <clears throat> All right, so long rest. Am I still a dude? You're still a dude. <laughs> She's just a dude being a dude. <laughs> she was turned into a dude. 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 I'm tempted dude. to drink another one just to dude. see if it swaps me back, but probably something dude. worse could happen. <laughs> I know Tavriel's secret. Okay, so 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 monks can move vertically, right? Because because we have improved movement. Okay. So I could conceivably run 90 feet down that hole. And then if there's still space left, I have slow fall. I can probably fall like another like 100 feet and not take any damage. Okay. Yeah, although John said there was going to be stuff to tabulate for the rest before you do anything, Chris. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. He had something yeah, he had to ahead. do. Go ahead, John. Housekeeping. Um, everybody except Tavriel. Give me a constitution save. Oh, no. Except every... Okay, gotcha. No. Please, 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 please. <laughs> Five. Okay. <laughs> Damn it. What's Six. Oh, no. <laughs> Nine. The natural Nine. one. Eight. The natural one. Wow. <laughs> and here I set the DC as as easy as I could and every single one of you failed it. <laughs> okay. This is um, be unfortunate. <laughs> at least we all got a long rest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, during the during the night. Actually, no, I take that back. Mayok, you are unaffected. Oh, okay. You, you didn't sleep. I forgot about that. Did you guys use Mayok's benefit on your saves, by the way? Yes, yeah, plus three. Don't well, it's still only an 11. All right, nine. Eight. <laughs> okay, Dirkus, you made it. Oh! No, Dirkus, you're okay. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Happy uh, Ben okay. uh, Gleep and Fang, however, um, your night was... Uh, your, your sleep was 
broken by really nasty nightmares. Somebody like somebody trying to whisper to you to uh, tickle to tickle your fears to uh, tickle your feet fears <laughs> and, uh, raise images of uh, some of your more insidious fears in your mind while you're trying to sleep. So while you did get the benefit, otherwise get the benefits of a long rest, you wake with one level of exhaustion. Gotcha. Right, where do I add that? Uh, conditions? Uh, yes. yes. Numero uno. I'm trying to think what fixes that other than greater oh. restoration. I can't think of anything. Another sleep. I don't think I have that. greater restoration. Greater restoration is pretty well up there in the spell list. So that yeah. would seem to make uh, taking potions of watchful rest and not sleeping a, a another mm. additional <laughs> benefit. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> All right, so I have so, disadvantage okay. on ability checks. Well, we don't know that that's a general thing of the tomb or if that's because of the room that we were in either. So right. let's not make assumptions. <laughs> Why? Because you don't make an ass out, yes, of, out you. of you and me, me. <laughs> <laughs> so you wake up gleep and fang kind of groggy uh the rest of you happy and chipper and ready to tackle this tomb um <laughs> except for you Durkers. uh you're happy and chipper and ready to go home <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, so what is it that Gleep wanted to try to do? Uh, he was going to run down the hole as far as he could and see if he could reach the bottom. And, uh, if not, he still has a really good slow fall. So he's, uh, he, he can reduce falling damage by 45, which is like a hundred feet worth of falling to be or something. Fair, you don't to know if fair. that's a shaft or just a hole that leads to the like ceiling of the next room. True true uh, but we only have 50 feet of rope and I can I can run that in, in one go so so how about this John how about Cleve's gonna run 45 feet down the wall and then 40 feet, 45 feet back up the wall because he can move vertically um, so he's gonna go 45 feet into the hole yep. running along the wall of the hole yep and then and then back up and then back up because oh, I, I can do that I can do that all in, in, in with a move and a dash so you can do that with a move and a dash. Okay, so you can yep. do that without stopping. That's Correct. Point. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Monks. monks are monks. And it's a nice round hole, so I can imagine that. Okay. <laughs> you psych yourself up. Uh, I, 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 I. <laughs> you take you take a, a, a leap into uh, in, into the hole, and you plant your feet on the on the uh, sides of the <laughs> hole, and you start running down. And you notice... Not really feet, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> your, your pods, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> um, and as you go flying down the hole um, as at uh, breakneck speed, uh, you find that the hole is actually really short, and you should have listened to Durkris. Oh. <laughs> as, the, uh, as the wall suddenly falls away from you, and you suddenly start falling down into a room below you. I turn to a parachute. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. You'll hear that? He said you should have listened to Dirk West. <laughs> Never been said in the history of time. <laughs> All you hear is go, 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 go. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, I need to actually look at the map for this one. <laughs> Never been said in the history of time. I got six characters on deck. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> Did anybody prepare to spell magic as far as dispelling the yes. magical darkness? Are you going to attack the darkness? Attack the darkness. 
<laughs> I'm gonna attack the door crit. <laughs> Chris, she's loose again, by the way. If you got the monitor, I'll help keep an eye on her. Okay, honey. Just hanging on the rocking chair for now. Okay. Um, as you uh, slow parachute down uh, into the floor, uh, towards the floor, you find yourself uh, in a room uh, with. Uh, you have time to look around as you're fall as you're nicely floating down. Well, it's <laughs> uh, still dark, right? Well, he has night. He has dark vision. <laughs> but I thought it was magic dark. Yeah, well, it's while he was in the hall. Now that he's out of the hall, he actually finds himself in a room that is illuminated by four torches. Oh. So four torches illuminate stone sphinxes scrouched, 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 (laughs) (laughs) crouched in the corners of this 15 foot high room. Torches cast flickering light across hieroglyphs carved into the tiled floor. At the center of the room, towards which you are uh, floating, a gold inlaid funeral barge stands atop a three foot tall stone dais. Resting on the deck of the barge is a small golden sarcophagus decorated with horned rabbits. A dark shaft opens in the ceiling directly above the barge from which you are currently falling, while to the south a corridor is visible through a set of fangs carved into the wall. A skeleton of a dwarf sprawls on the floor east of the barge, clad in a tattered yellow turban and dusty chainmail, clutching a bronze shield. Who has the turban? I'm sorry, I'm watching a baby. A dead dwarf. A dead dwarf. A dwarf skeleton lying on the floor. Oh, jeez. Something that did not make it. I see. He did not have feather fall. He just fell. (laughs) How far did you fall? Uh, like, 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 you like, said fi- like 15, fi- 15 feet, feet tall. 15 feet. So, okay. 15 feet. but with his little follows in on issue. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, and with, uh, hey, uh gentle gentle this squishing... guy. how did it go down there? And with the gentle squishing sound, you find yourself, uh, landing on the, uh, dais with the sarcophagus. Okay. So, sorry. No. I, I, I come out of the parachute shape and stand on the dais and, um, I, I call up to people. Uh, and and basically try try to yell and 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 Gleepy's a description of the room. Does anybody reply? Can can they hear me? Um, they uh, there's nothing stopping the sound. So you can so they and half the denizens of the to- of the tomb can hear you. <laughs> okay. So 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 Gleep, Gleep describes the room to you guys. So so how far how far is the distance total from? From the dais to the top of the hole. Uh, let's see. Let's see how high did I say the dais was? A three foot tall stone dais. So about tw- so it's about twelve feet to, okay. 12, to the hole from the stone dais. So is there no, 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 anywhere? From, no, hold on. From the dais to the very top of the hole where I went in. Oh, from the very top of the hole. Oh, well, the hole was only about ten feet. So we're looking at about twenty-two feet. 22, 23 feet. Okay. Okay. So, um, so, so I, so I tell everybody that the, that it's twenty feet down. <laughs> okay. Um, is there a way to tie off a, a fifty foot rope somewhere on the double face around the end of the hole? It's got horns, right? Hmm. Is it a horny <laughs> devil? What she said. <laughs> uh, it it is a horny devil. There, there are devil horns. Okay. Uh, tie it to so the horns. I'll tie off some ropes to the horns and say, let's go down there. And then uh, Tavriel just jumps down with her monk skills. Okay. Skip it to level three. How's that? <laughs> oh, well, I kind of thought wanting to explore the whole floor first. I, I didn't want. Well, it said into darkness descend. I was, I, mean, with, so... I was with Sarah. It was probably a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> you could always go back up. We yes. have a rope. That's why I tied off the ropes, so that we could we return to the second floor if we want to. But <laughs> collecting another god sounds fun to me. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Give me 30 seconds here. Sure, sure. One, one <laughs> thousand. Like I didn't find one thousand. <laughs> three, one thousand. Four, one thousand. So, so Five, Dirk, Dirkris, Dirkris has a god. Tavriel has a god. Um, no, wait. Fang does. Fang, yeah, Dirkris. Dirkris, Fang, and Tavriel. Okay. 
We're running up to the old gods, you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a little, a little tiny, little tiny gold sarcophagus on the top of this thing. A bunny rabbit. Okay. And there's fangs, um, like a snake that ate the bunny rabbits. I'm very worried about this. Where the fangs about the rabbit, the... George. And can we keep the fang away from the bunnies? Ha 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 Okay, you actually get a handout for this one. Ah, okay. Um. So, yeah, I'll post. Uh, yes, I know. Go away. I'm gonna put it in the chat. So I'll post another link in the chat. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. <laughs> we're looking so that at is the, what you are seeing. We're looking at the room that John just described. <laughs> so is that yep. the corpse on the right side? That is the corpse on the right side. Okay. Um, the the uh, five of you are kind of currently standing around uh, on the stone dais uh, around the uh, sarcophagus inside the yeah. boat. In the boat. Uh, don't go on the floor, dude. Say, <laughs> exactly. Uh, Mayok, friend, can you detect if there are any undead down here, like our icky-looking friend over there? Uh, Look up your divine sensibility, there, buddy. Uh, I have to go back to <laughs> okay. So, features and traits, divine sense. So, for, so, so for the listeners, the floor has squares all over it that have all kinds of different symbols. designs on them. Yes, yeah. uh, yeah. some symbols. Oh all right. so and the I... sarcophagus is in a boat on a stone dais. Yep. yep. And that's where we are. Yeah. And the dwarf looks to be in a square that is two squares in from the door. Like one of the it has feet. a foot on it. Yeah. <laughs> like maybe bad. feet are bad. Okay. Something bad happened. All right. Then. I'm going to use the design sense. Your design the sense, fabulous. Divine. <laughs> divine. I'm sorry, I couldn't sense. help it. I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. <laughs> and it says, as an action, I you can detect good and evil until the end of your next turn. You can sense some anything affected by the hollow okay. spirit spell. Or know the location of any celestial fiend undead within 60 feet that is not behind total cover. We should have okay. had you use that in the other room. <laughs> well, I didn't have very many. Uh... Celestial fiend or undead? Okay. Yes. That doesn't, that doesn't, that does that wouldn't include gods. Uh, they don't exactly <laughs> count as celestials. Uh, but okay. Uh, you go ahead and uh, you reach out uh, with your senses um, to as far as you can see around the room. Uh, but uh, uh, let's see. You do not sense anything in particular. Okay. I don't sense anything in particular. Celestials, yeah. <laughs> celestials, or undeads are inside of you. Right. Are in your sight. Within check. sixty feet. Don't forget. Yep. Yeah, no, it's just okay. nice to know that that dwarf isn't going to stand up and attack us. Tavriel's gun shy after the the dude and the, the other two. <laughs> so so Fang, do you want do you want this god? <laughs> uh, I think we we got to get the sarcophagus open first. Uh. I think I've already deep. said it. I don't have room for another god in me, I guess. Uh, you know. <laughs> Thing already it's, already, it's already a little crowded up here, even before I got the god. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mayak. I, saw, I, I meant Mayak. Mayak, did, did you want this? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a devil. I don't know. It may not <laughs> well, be. It's, a, it's a bunny rabbit, probably. It's a tiny sarcophagus. The, the sarcophagus had a it. rabbit around it. Yeah. Mm. Um... We'll have to see. Well, I guess, first of all, can we open it? I'm just going to come out and say it. You push and you push, uh, but uh, no matter how much you push, that sarcophagus lid is not budging. Uh, I didn't think it would be that 
easy. <laughs> We're gonna have to tap dance on the floor. So there's and a puzzle. Find and what I think, sucks I to, think that there is a puzzle here. Yes. What sucks to say is that there's probably a hint for that puzzle and it's not on this level. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so do we want to climb out and try this again later, even though getting a god? Although would be it did say to descend into the darkness. It could have just been for the stairway though. Maybe in the idea that it's easier to do this mm-hmm. from not coming from where that dwarf came from, which was obviously that opening. Mm. Um, can we investigate the sarcophagus? Like any hidden levers, switches, hard to um, see keyholes? Yeah, I'm not going to bother. Matching glyphs. Not going to bother with rolling you that rolling that one. No, you you. Can, can, can't even barely make out the seam of the lid, much less any kind of keyhole or latches or anything. It's a start. Can I do like an arcana check to see if I can like make out any glyphs in the area, anything that would match what we're seeing on the floor? Uh, sure. Let's see. Even though uh, I suck don't... at arcana. <laughs> uh, I can't help you. <clears throat> so I have minus one. Yes, so do I. But I'm trying here, guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so we have no idea how to get through this thing. <laughs> I'd like to invest them and gauge the room. Wow. It will go like a room. <laughs> <laughs> There's pretty pictures on the floor. But what do they mean? Yeah, there's like a bird, there's a snake, there's like a scarab, a tree, a staff, a foot. See, Fang, if you summoned a creature again, could we have it test stepping on some of these squares? Uh, John's muted. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I've been sitting here talking and I forgot to have a spot. <laughs> He's like, why are they talking over me? Oh. <laughs> All right. Um, so Durkis hasn't rolled her perception yet. So, do you want me to roll perception or well, you're perceptifying the room, right? Well, I was saying investigate. Well, investigation requires getting up close and personal. So, okay, just looking so at I the guess room. I'll perceptify, which is unfortunately disadvantage with me, but we will try it anyway. Okay, <laughs> never <I> know. Help. <laughs> All right, that was a six. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nothing really pops out at you. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. It's dark. Oh. Well, no, it's lit by torches. But it's dark for you seeing what's going on because you can't see it. But it's not You're dark. In the dark. Say what you mean, man. <laughs> You're in the dark. You don't see I'm it. I'm not in the dark, though. It's not dark. <laughs> <laughs> I still vote that we should have Fang summon something and have it check some of the squares. What I was trying to say is that you're investigating the room and you didn't find what you were looking for. That's all. I mean, I looked around, but, you know, I'm kind of dumb, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm trying here, but someone needs to help me out, you know? Yeah. All right, so how would you like, what, what would you like to do? Have we all fallen down the hole? This- you're you're <laughs> all standing we- around this, on the dais, around the sarcophagus. Yes. Uh-huh. All right, and the weird, and the little boat that it's in. And we can't, we can't I wonder punch. what the boat means. Can we move the boat? There's not a man in the uh, boat, is there? No, the boat the boat does not move either. It is Thanks. just a boat. I mean, can I investigate the boat? You can investigate the boat. I'll help we you. All, you all sound Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? I get a 20 to investigating the boat. Okay. Uh, it is... Op- as I said, it is a gold inlaid funeral barge um, in, that uh, is uh, holding the sarcophagus, which seems appropriate an appropriate thing for a funeral barge to hold. Yeah. Um, it looks very well crafted. Um, 
made out of, you know, nice teak wood, all that fun stuff. Uh, but it is otherwise just a barge. Just a barge. Yeah, Dirk is just standing around scratching her head. <laughs> so my ideas are yeah, testing the floor plates with something. Um, our guy with wild shape turns into something flying and checks out all the sphinxes just to see if there's a, a clue or keys or switches or something out there. Or we, we could go up, explore the rest of the top floor, you know, go down and hope that we find some information on a plaque on the third floor and then still come back up and go to that room through this path. I'm just trying to think how we could be better prepared. Yeah, I mean, there probably is a plaque or something that gives a clue to this room. So for us to try to solve it without having that information is, is seems unwise. Hmm. Because we'll end up like the dwarf. They're all dead and, and bony. Yeah, there's, there's too many options in this room to just kind of wing it, you know? Yeah. So I think Good we're call. voting for so the only back. one who can wing it. <laughs> I think you we're get inspiration there, Raider. Right? <laughs> yeah, climb back up. I think we're going back up to the next level. Okay. Uh, you don't have too much trouble uh, getting back up the ropes. Um, uh, you find your, you vomit forth from the mouth of the uh, <laughs> devil uh, back into uh, the uh, oh my God. gloom of the second uh, vomit level, forth. <laughs> Vomit this gleep up through it. <laughs> White at that. Is she in there with you, by the way? Yeah, she is. In. I thought I heard the door close. I just want to check. I see you had cookies to bribe her. Very smart. That's what I was doing, too. Uh, no more cookies. So, so I guess we'll go back to the corridor that has the four-way passage in it. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I Unless you guys want to use the sunlight spell on the zombies. We could do that. We're fresh. Hmm. Do you guys want to do that on the zombies? Why not? The big. All right, sounds, it sounds like we're going for the zombie door, John. I mean, I okay. don't. I, I want to, but I don't want to, but I do, but I don't. Okay. <laughs> zombie door. Zombie, zombie door. door. Okay, <laughs> you make yourself uh, make your way down to back to the southern door. Um, at the sound of your approach, once again, you start hearing. Uh, as cast, the zombies uh, try to bite you through the door. I cast daylight. Okay. I, I am very proud of your zombie noises, John. Those are pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> very Walking Dead. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Wow, that used both my spell slots. Third level. Holy crap. What? Oh, yeah. what? It should only take one. It, it should not use You might have double tapped it accidentally or you something. You might have tapped by there, two. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. Don't short yourself, man. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. As you, uh, um, as the uh, sunlight fills the uh, room ar around you, uh, the uh, zombies uh, flinch away from the light um, and uh, start trying to run away. And as they do, uh, the uh, uh, door um, sh uh, vibrates, shudders, and lifts up into the ceiling. <laughs> Revealing oh. a room beyond. Hey. Are we going forth? Yeah, I think so. That's the whole point, right? <laughs> okay, you, Chris, you're muted. I think John's looking for a link. No. Oh. Uh, last nope. for... No, it's just moving. Just moving on to the next part of the. Just advancing oh, myself gotcha, to that gotcha. part of the. Uh, All right. Module. Gotcha. So last for one hour, and it's bright light. And, and dim light for an additional 60 feet. Okay. So you're not using uh, a torch for the next hour, Gray. <laughs> nice. That's all. Okay. Worth the third level slot. Impressive. All right. Uh, looking into the room, uh, six glass cauldrons brimming with humanoid bones line the walls of the tomb, <laughs> at the center of which stands an ancient chariot bearing a bronze sarcophagus with treasures strewn atop it. Paintings on the chariot's body show a tall bird with a long, sharp beak. On the south wall, um, opposite you, a bronze shield bears the embossed image of a Cholton warrior carrying a spear. Below an, in below an inscription reads, 
bow before no one. Four bronze statues stand on pedestals on either side of the shield. They depict Cholton warriors, one holding a sword, two with spears, and one missing its face. Oh. The zombies are still uh, trying to run away from the light, but they still look like they might uh, swipe at, uh, be perfectly willing to swipe at anything that gets close enough to them. Stay away from the zombies, check. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we'll move far enough into the room that we won't get squished by the door if it comes back <laughs> um, okay Good I can choose to put the point on an object I am holding at time of casting yeah yeah you could have put it on your shield that's always mm-hmm. a good approach that way if you have to fight you still have the light yeah in effect which I don't so. think I said so I mean it's all good yeah. Uh, okay, so, um, we're, so it, we're partway in the room. Durkris, uh, one, real quick here. Uh, Durkris, um, as you enter the room, uh, Obalaka in your head is like, oh, it, um, do, uh, be careful of those cauldrons. Uh, they, they, I can see that they have the uh, bones of, uh, of the uh, zealous devotees of... Uh, if if um, if I read the uh, motif of the room, I'd probably pop uh, Papazotl. Um, uh, Papa and who? so, Papazotl. Who the hell was that? Uh, Papazotl was who the hell was Papazotl? Papazotl was. Uh, kind of an, an odd one, very shrewd and conniving. Um, but uh, his zealots were very zealous and uh, and and may try to defend his tomb even in death yeah I think it's too late for that there are already zombies outside did you not see them <laughs> zombies are zombies I'm confessing that that's them yeah no 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 the cauldrons be careful of the cauldrons okay uh guys uh, little little miss uh, scaredy cat wants me to let you know to be careful of the cauldrons there you go she had an issue with the water uh, she wasn't completely wrong <laughs> <laughs> which means you might want to pay you attention you want to pay some attention to her warning Okay, and I think that's probably a good place to wrap it up here for tonight. Uh, rather than because it's we're gonna because getting through this tomb can what? be a little no time consuming. So, all right. So why don't we go ahead and say good night to the listeners? <laughs> good night, good night, good night listeners. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, please leave us a review anywhere this podcast can be found. Our social media links, plus additional content, can be found on our website at knightsofroleplay.com. Please tell your friends about Knights of Roleplay, an adventuring podcast, and spread the word through social media. Your help and support are greatly appreciated.